Hello, Star Wars Unboxing fans. Welcome to a different type of episode of Darth Tuba Star Wars Unboxing Show. I'm your host, Darth Tuba, here with a project. Uh, I meant, I mentioned this on a previous episode that I picked up and I did an unboxing of these 3D p printed pieces. I think I called it Hole in the Wall Productions, and I apologize for that. It's actually Hole in the Ground Productions. And it's, uh, it's going to be an interesting thing. This is what I'm aiming to do. This is the place or the vehicle that they made. This is the Lars Speeder. So I've already primed, as they suggested, and I'm just going to wing it, okay? Um, I will tell you, I do not in any way have crafting experience other than just kind of going for it and seeing how things go, and that's pretty much it. All right, so I am going to do my absolute best to, um, you know, just make this happen. And but I'm okay with it. It's just a, just experimenting. Um, I'm going to use an epoxy to glue all the pieces. I think um, I'm going to maybe do some painting first, uh, just because it's a little easier to manipulate. And then once I'm done with that, uh, you know, I'm going to just. Uh, Glue, glue the pieces together and, you know, touch them up and see how it goes. Okay, so while we are getting this, letting this dry a little bit, um, now I will say that I saw a lot of different versions of this uh, specific land speeder. I think it's a th X35, right? And I saw lots of different paint schemes and I just decided, you know what? I'm going to use my own thing. Take a few hints from other ones. Now, heads up, I am no crafting painter, okay? I am learning as I go and doing things. You know, I picked up a few things from watching other YouTubers, but I'm essentially just kind of winging it, all right? Uh, th but I'm really happy with it so far. I, I'm Obviously, there's some cleaning that needs to be done. You can see down here. Um, but I also kind of like the realness of it. Like, it's like as if Luke himself was just touching it up. So I don't mind if the color isn't exact. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just going to kind of play around with it um but the other reason i'm like while i'm letting this dry let's come over here i have a few other items here that if you watched the previous episode you can see that i unboxed these i actually already put this little guy together this is one of those double power droid models okay and we have a couple of other uh droids that have never been produced and i'd like to uh try to do that but i do think this one seemed pretty simple in terms of the painting on the beat on the feet and the painting on the body are mostly solid color with a few accents. So uh, I glued it all together first. The rest of them, I feel like it's probably better if I paint them. I'm going to, instead of doing, uh, I'm going to skip the priming part because I think I only have paint and primer. So it's going to actually paint them. So I figured if I'm going to do that, I might as well try, um, put a little white paint first. If it doesn't work, I'll go over it again with a uh, primer. So I'm going to paint all of these white first and I'll do this while we're waiting for this, for the speeder to dry.
and here we are, our final product. After a whole couple of days, I guess about three days on and off of preparing and painting and washing, power, you know, like, like uh, you know, doing the, um, the wash or gouache, I guess I call it, and all sorts of different things and finishing. And I'm pretty proud of the, the job I did for never having done it before, never having done this type of kind of um, art artisan craft project. I'm pretty pretty happy with it. So uh, these are we're gonna start with. Let's move my land speeder a little bit out of the way here, and this little guy here, and we're gonna start with these. This this guy right here. Now I will say, all of these droids have been seen in Star Wars. However. These are not, I can't really call these action figures per se, okay? They do not have any moving parts, all right? They are, in fact, um, little statues, if you will, or figurines, okay? Um, and I will say that, you know, I ha not having the steadiest of hands <laughs> at my age, um, you know, there are some errors on the paint scheme, you know, the paint applications that I did, but I'm overall really happy with it. And uh, you know, this I'm not. This is not something I'm selling. I'm just something I'm just putting out there for fun. We have first our tandem gong droid. Okay, tandem meaning kind of like two sets of feet. And he's got his little thing in the front. He's got his little. I will say that this is probably the most um, action figurey of the group of them because this actually does come out of here. I'm not going to take it on. I'm afraid it's going to pop out. This is just held together with a an epoxy the the cable. Um, but I always love this when I've seen it. I was like, that's really cute. And I wanted to have, I wish they had made a double. So they have. So there you go. And then here we have the, uh, what is affectionately known as stove bot. Uh, you can see this kind of going across the screen in the background, I believe in the Jawa Sandcrawler in episode four, New Hope. And I just thought it was a cool looking bot. It's just something that would kind of roll around. Again, these don't even have working wheels. They're just all 3D printed. Um, as a as a static item, but that worked out pretty well. And then we have the um, this is the um, hangar bay. This is a hangar bay bot, and um, this one I really like. It's got that the head similar to the treadwell. It's very similar to a treadwell droid actually, but it's got a little more meat to it. Um, the way it's painted, I guess it's an imperial droid <laughs> or first order. But uh, I really like this one, and uh, again, it, it, it was a good beginner, um, you know, put together. It was very easy to glue together. There wasn't a lot of um, challenge with it. And then we have our um, Hammerhead bot. I think this also in, might be considered an R1 or a type of R1 or one of the R, like a, like a precursor to the R2 unit, okay? And it's a Treadwell kind of thing, but it's got its little, um, you know, stuff on the front I got it on the back too so yeah pretty happy with those now last but not least we have the I think it's the x35 and it's sometimes called the Owen Lars land speeder okay now first off this is heavy this is a heavy item because it's built very solid each piece I think was printed um, solid it wasn't printed with uh, any kind of hollowness to it so um, I appreciated the effort that went into it. Now, uh, I looked at different pictures of it, and honestly, I saw a lot of different um, photos and a lot of different uh, computer graphic imagery of it, and I decided that um, I just wanted to kind of go with my own thing, kind of started based on it, but did a few things. So uh, I already, as you can see, I kind of put R2. These are my, by the way, these are my original R2 and 3PO, very, very banged up figures. Or you can see R2's, you know, he's got hardly anything left of him. And he's been completely uh, destroyed. I, I showed him on a previous episode. But um, now there's no wheels on this. I suppose one could build a wheel uh, setup with this if they wanted. You know, kind of carve it in and, 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 and install it. But this is just going to be sitting. And I was really proud of this. You know, I thought I kind of did a nice design on it. Now, this has a couple of, this actually does have a couple of play features. One thing, it has a removable top and we can have a have a driver in there i will say uh unless your driver might be princess leia um any driver that's kind of you know it it doesn't fully close 
okay? But if you take the driver out and then you place it here, you can have it be um, snug, okay? In addition, if you take 3PO, I don't even know if this is exactly what's supposed to be in there, but you can put a little cover on it, right? And that looks more like from the movie. And if you take R2 out, and it came with this this piece, which I guess is like a power <laughs> generator or something, or maybe it's like a, I don't know, I, maybe it's almost as like a hyperdrive, but I doubt they would have this on a hyperdrive, you know, this, but some kind of power coupling, okay? And that's kind of the, the piece as it is on display. So overall, I am so pleased with this. I can't even tell you. Again, I know that there are many artisans out there that can do uh, so much better work than me, but I was very pleased with it. Oh, it also has, if I it has a little piece here, you can pull this out and have a little workstation there. So that's nice. You gotta be careful there. That just kind of rests on it. But, um, and this piece does come out, as I said, but it's a little hard to get out. You just have to work it a little bit. So that is my my first attempt, now that, now as I said, this is not a 3D production of mine. This comes from Hole in the Ground Productions. Check out their site. They have amazing dioramas, droid, other droids, um, some fantastic pieces that you can uh, complement your collection with. And uh, all reasonably priced. And uh, they were great to work with. I highly recommend them. I, uh, they are they are a wonderful a wonderful group um, and they do both stuff for three inch three and a half three and three quarter inch as well as for uh, six inch and and they do other genres not just Star Wars so I hope you guys enjoyed this I really enjoyed making this I really enjoyed working on this this week and uh, thank you so much for watching be sure to like subscribe hit the notification button check out all the other content on instagram and twitter check out and, and uh, all the other content on red five thank you red five for supporting the channel we'll see you in the next video until next time may the force and the toys whether they be store bought or you made may they all be with you mm -hmm.